Hey guys, CB Super. So I got a comment the other day saying he'd been looking for a tutorial on how to animate shapes in DaVinci. He wanted to learn how to uh, transform a square into a circle, for instance. So I left a big long explanation of how you could possibly do it, but that was the most complicated way. There's a much, much easier way. So let's go ahead and jump into Fusion and I'll show you how. All right, so here we are inside of Fusion. It's a brand new Fusion comp with nothing inside of it. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop down a rectangle. And let's take a look at this rectangle. Let's take a look at some of the properties over here on the inspector. We have width and we have height. I can drop this down until it looks about like a square. That's probably pretty close to square. For whatever reason, like I was thinking that the width would be exactly double the height, but it isn't. It's a, it's a little off. So one way to do this is we can actually bring in a, an ellipse and if we want it to be you know roughly the right size, maybe we do something like this. Maybe this is the final circle that we want. I can jump back over to the rectangle and now I can kind of play with the width. And you know, honestly, to make this a little bit easier, let's go ahead and merge these two together. And I do this a lot where I want to merge these two objects together just so I can use one as reference. And I'm going to go ahead and just color this. All right, there we go. That's a little better. All right, with these two merged, now we can kind of see that we want to use, we only want to use this ellipse as a template. So I can come into the rectangle now and I can kind of play with the width until it's right about there. And then I can play with the height till it's, you know, right about there. Maybe. If you want to get it a little bit more fine control, you can go ahead and hold down the command key and you can push it out to right about there. And now it's just a matter of figuring out how long you want this animation to take. So I can actually go ahead and just disconnect this now. And in the rectangle, maybe I want it to be a 10 frame duration for the animation. I can just come over to the corner radius, click on the keyframe, move my timeline roughly about 10 frames, and then I can just drive my corner radius all the way down. And now you'll see we have a really simple animation where we have animated the corner radius to basically go from zero all the way to one. So that's pretty much it. I mean, that's the end of the tutorial. If all you want is a square into a circle, that is the easiest way to do that. And of course you can, maybe, maybe you wanna go uh, from a perfect circle to a, you know, really, crazy rectangle, right? So start with the square because the square gives you the ability to, um, you know, have it as a circle. And you can even, uh, if you want, like, you can save this as a custom shape, right? Like you could save, you can save this rectangle as a perfect square if you wanted to. And then that way you can bring it back out whenever you want a perfect circle. I could even, I could even reset this as the default, but let's not do that. I could save this as a macro. Um, and an easy way to do this is, since we're looking at this rectangle, let me just go ahead and jack the corner radius all the way up. So that looks weird, right? We can tell that it's too wide. So I can just bring the width in here a little bit. And, and if I, again, if I wanna make sure that this is a perfect circle, I can just make an ellipse, come back over to the rectangle. So this is my rectangle, but I can obviously change how large I want this to be, right? If I make it bigger or smaller, I, um, I can actually increase it. Just holding this corner here, I can now bring it just as big as, say, my template that I wanted. Is it gonna be exact? I don't know. Uh, you might have to play around with it, but that's why we use the template to get, you know, whatever desired shape that we want. So now I've made this rectangle. This is maybe the size that I plan on using. Now it's really easy. I can just right click, come over to settings and I can save as. Now I can save this as say a uh, circle rectangle or whatever. And then I can put this either in my macros or I can save this in my template folder. It's, it's gonna save it as a settings file. And actually, you know, if you wanna do this, um, I have another video that shows how to do this. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'll just link that in the upper right corner, and you can go check that video out if you want. And that's so if you wanna save this as a default, you can always bring it in as a rectangle that is in the shape of a, of a circle. Um, and that's, and that's, so that's an easy way to kind of just get around that. So now, if I want to animate this, Let's say I wanna make this, like I wanna use this in some kind of motion graphics design thing. 
uh, I can come over here to the width, height, and corner radius. And let's say I want to start it at frame, what is it at? Frame 69. Now I can come over to say frame 75, and now I can start playing with, I can drop the corner radius all the way down, and I can start adjusting my height and my width and my whatever, you know, and let's say this will be the, the finished outcome. And now from frame 70 to 75, I get this. So I'm animating the shape from some type of circle or ellipse to now a uh, square. Now, if this isn't exactly what you're looking for, let's say you want, I don't know, maybe some kind of polygonal shape and you want to transform that into a circle. Well, that's gonna be a little bit different. We're gonna approach that slightly different. So let's go ahead and delete these here. All right, so let's say I wanna make some kind of shape that is different, that is not just a square circle or a triangle. Let's go ahead and bring this polygon in and let's kind of load it up here. Let's say I want this to be like a logo and maybe this is gonna be my logo. Maybe it's just a C, but I want this to kind of change into a circle over time. So I can do that and the way that I'll animate these points is by coming over to the right click here for shape animation and I'm just gonna right click and set a key. Now that I've set that key, I'm gonna to come to the end of my animation, let's say at frame 80, and now I want to move those points into a circle. But let's say I don't know what a perfect circle looks like, so again, I can use the process of bringing in a perfect circle, maybe that's a little too big, and then I can kind of bring this over here, so it's right around the, the same size that I want it to be. In order to see both of them at the same time, I'm gonna to wanna to take my polygon, I'm gonna just bring in a background, maybe we'll color that one red, bring in the ellipse, just color this one, I don't know, like a blue, and then just merge these two together. All right, so that's about perfect. So now all I have to do is I can start moving this because I've already animated it. I started it on frame 70, I wanna end it on frame 80, and now I can just move these points wherever I want, roughly right around the same distance for this to be a circle. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, unless you want it to be perfect. And I know what you're saying, well, it looks weird because it's maintaining that same shape. And that's okay, because what we're gonna do is we're just going to select all of the points now, and I'm gonna hit Shift S. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna basically smoothen all of those points. And all I'm doing is I'm grabbing these tangent handles and I'm just moving them around. The problem is, is if we were to get rid of some of these points, uh, it would get rid of them completely so they would no longer be inside of the animation now there is ways to get around that but uh, that gets a little bit more advanced so I'm just going to do it this way and then again select all the points again shift s we'll go ahead and smooth them uh, the problem is this one is a little too high and we need to probably move it over so it's a little bit more like that because what it does it's gonna kind of smoothen out the tangent handles so this is kind of like a finessing thing. This this could take a while. And actually what would be better is if you just kind of move these out evenly and kind of evenly space them out. That way when you, when you hit Shift S, it'll smoothen all of them out, smoothing them with like how, how far away they are from each other as well. And now it's just a matter of, uh, you'll notice that it goes from whatever shape we had and conforms to the shape that we want. So that's pretty much how you can do that. I'm gonna keep searching for more ways to animate one shape into another shape. This is just two ways you can do that. So I hope this helps. I hope this is kind of what you were looking for. If you have any questions about how to do this, uh, leave them down in the comments. Um, if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe, hit that bell notification, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.